Hello, welcome to part 7 of this series. Let's move to question number 121. A patient with diagnosis of iliotibial band syndrome is undergoing physiotherapy. Which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate for addressing the condition? Option A, hip abductor strengthening exercises. Option B, cryotherapy. Option C, ultrasound therapy. Option D, corticosteroid injection. And the answer is... Option A, hip abductor strengthening exercises. Now let's move to question number 122. A patient with diagnosis of patellar tendinopathy is undergoing physiotherapy. Which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate for addressing the condition? Option A, plyometric exercise. Option B, eccentric quadriceps strengthening exercises. Option C, straight leg raise. Option D, wall squat. And the answer is... Option B, eccentric quadriceps strengthening exercises. Now let's move to question number 123. A patient with a diagnosis of ILS tendinopathy is undergoing physiotherapy. Which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate in the initial stages of treatment? Option A. Eccentric calf strengthening exercises. Option B. Extracorporeal shock weight therapy. Option C. Activity modification and relative rest. Option D. Heel raise. And the answer is... Option C. Activity modification and relative rest. Now let's move to question number 124. A patient with recent total shoulder arthroplasty is undergoing physiotherapy. Which of the following precautions should be followed in the early post-operative phase? Option A. Avoid shoulder abduction beyond 90 degree. Option B. Avoid shoulder external rotation. Option C. Avoid shoulder flexion. Option D. Avoid weight-bearing activities on affected arm. And answer is... Option A. Avoid shoulder abduction beyond 90 degree. Now let's move to question number 125. A patient with diagnosis of femoroastabular impingement is undergoing physiotherapy. Which of the following exercises would be the most appropriate for improving hip mobility and reducing impingement? Option A. Lenses. Option B. Quadrupt rocking. Option C. Straight leg raises. Option D. Bridging exercises. And the answer is... Option B. Quadrupt rocking. Now let's move to question number 126. A patient with diagnosis of lateral epicondylitis, that's tennis elbow, is undergoing physiotherapy. Which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate in initial stages of treatment? Option A. Eccentric wrist extensor strengthening exercises. Option B. Corticosteroid injections. Option C. Cross friction massages. Option D. Activity modification and relative rest. And the answer is... Option A. Activity modification and relative rest. Now let's move to question number 127. A patient with a diagnosis of ditching muscular dystrophy is undergoing physiotherapy. Which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate for maintaining functional ability? Option A. Progressive resistance exercises. Option B. Hydrotherapy and aquatic exercises. Option C. Electromyographic biofeedback. Option D. Extracorporeal shock wave therapy. And the answer is... Option B. Hydrotherapy and aquatic exercises. Now let's move to question number 128. A patient with diagnosis of supraspinatus tendinopathy is undergoing physiotherapy. Which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate in initial stages of treatment? Option A. Corticosteroid injection. Option B. Eccentric rotator cuff strengthening exercises. Option C. Posterior shoulder stretches. Option D. Scapular stabilization exercises. And the answer is... Option C. Posterior shoulder stretches. Now let's move to question number 129. A patient with a recent angle fracture is undergoing physiotherapy. Which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate in early post-operative phase? Option A. Angle range of motion exercises. Option B. Calf raise. Option C. Balance board exercises. Option D. Agility exercises. And the answer is... Option A. Angle range of motion exercises. Now let's move to question number 130. A patient with diagnosis of adhesive capsulitis, that's frozen shoulder, is undergoing physiotherapy. Which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate in the early stages of treatment? Option A. Aggressive stretching exercises. Option B. Joint mobilization technique. Option C. Corticosteroid injection. Option D. Hydrotherapy. And the answer is... Option B. Joint mobilization technique. Now let's move to question number 131. A patient with diagnosis of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, that's COPD, is undergoing physiotherapy. Which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate for improving respiratory function and reducing dyspnea? 
ऑप्शन ए फर्स्ट लिफ्ट ब्रीथिंग एक्सरसाइजेस ऑप्शन बी अल्ट्रासाउंड थेरापी ऑप्शन सी चेस्ट पर्कर्शन एंड वाइब्रेशन टेक्निक्स एंड ऑप्शन डी सर्वेकल फ्रैक्शन एंड द आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए फर्स्ट लिफ्ट ब्रीथिंग एक्सरसाइजेस नाउ लेट्स मूव टू क्वेश्चन नंबर 132 A patient with diagnosis of many years is undergoing physiotherapy. Which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate for improving balance and reducing vertigo episode? Option A: vestibular rehabilitation exercises. Option B: ultrasound therapy. Option C: tens. Option D: ion diuresis. And the answer is option A: vestibular rehabilitation exercises. Now let's move to question number thirty-three. A patient with diagnosis of greater trochanteric pain syndrome that trochanteric bursitis is undergoing physiotherapy which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate in initial stages of treatment option A corticosteroid injection option B hip abductor strengthening exercises option C hip stretches and soft tissue massages option D gait retraining and the answer is option C hip stretches and soft tissue massages now let's move to question number 134 A patient with a diagnosis of plantar fasciitis is undergoing physiotherapy. Which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate for addressing the condition? Option A: extracorporeal shock with therapy. Option B: stretching exercises for plantar fascia. Option C: strengthening exercises for intrinsic foot muscles. Option D: night splints. And the answer is Option D: night splints. Now let's move to question number 135. A patient with diagnosis of cervical radiculopathy is undergoing physiotherapy. Which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate for reducing nerve root compression and improving mobility? Option A: ultrasound. Option B: cervical traction. Option C: isometric neck strengthening exercises. Option D: neck circles. And the answer is Option B: cervical traction. Now let's move to question number 136. A patient with diagnosis of spondylolisthesis is undergoing physiotherapy which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate for reducing pain and improving spinal stability option a mckenzie extension exercises option b lumbar stabilization exercises option c lumbar traction option d transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation that stands and the answer is option b lumbar stabilization exercises now let's move to question number 137 a patient with diagnosis of morton's neuroma is undergoing physiotherapy Which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate in initial stages of treatment? Option A: metatarsal pad or insole. Option B: corticosteroid injections. Option C: toe extrinsic muscle strengthening exercises. Option D: extracorporeal shock wave therapy. And the answer is Option A: metatarsal pad or insoles. Now let's move to question number 138. A patient with diagnosis of anterior cruciate ligament that's ACL deficiency is undergoing physiotherapy which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate for improving proprioception and functional stability option A cross chain squats option B agility drills option C stationary cycling option D isometrics of quadriceps contraction and the answer is option B agility drills now let's move to question number 139 A patient with a diagnosis of Ramsey Hunt syndrome is undergoing physiotherapy. Which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate for managing facial palsy? Option A: neuromuscular electrical stimulation. Option B: mirror therapy. Option C: trigger point dry needling. Option D: myofascial release. And the answer is Option A: neuromuscular electrical stimulation. Now let's move to question number 140. A patient with diagnosis of patellofemoral pain syndrome that's PFPS is undergoing physiotherapy. Which of the following intervention would be the most appropriate for addressing quadriceps muscle imbalance and patella tracking? Option A straight leg raise, option B wall squat, option C calf raise, option D hip abductor strengthening exercises. And the answer is option D hip abductor strengthening exercises. So that's all for today. If you have any doubts, please do mention in the comment box. See you in the next part. That's part eight. Till then, bye bye. See you. Take care.